Let's discuss idle feedback now. We've already tuned our idle base position table. So if the coolant temperature is this, the base position will be this percent open. And then when the coolant temperature changes, the base position will be this percent open. And the ECU is making the assumption that this percent open gets you where you want to go. Closed loop feedback is when the ECU looks at the difference between the target table and the actual measured RPM. So for instance, if the ECU's target is 1000 RPM and it's measuring that it's actually at 800 RPM, which is too low, the feedback max is the maximum amount of airflow the ECU can add in order to try and get the measured RPM closer to the target. The whole purpose of feedback is because conditions change on a different day or in other conditions you may need a little bit more airflow to hit your idle target or a little bit less airflow to hit your target. So that's the purpose of feedback is to account for whatever conditions that may be different than when it was originally tuned. So in general let's set this feedback max right now to plus 15. We're going to let it add 15 uh, percent so if the idle base duty table was 50 and the RPM was too low, the max it could go is 50 plus 15, so 65. For the feedback minimum, we're going to set that to the same number, minus 15 for this demo. When a car is tuned and running around, you may want to set the feedback minimum closer to zero. So for instance, you may say that we can add up to 15%, but maybe we can only remove 5% uh, because we are more concerned with uh, getting the RPM up than dropping it down. That's just something that some tuners do. For this demo, we'll use plus or minus 15. These numbers here, idle on below TPS and idle on below RPM, that is when feedback is active. So if the driver is not pressing the throttle and the RPM is below 1000, then idle feedback is allowed to, to run. The ECU assumes that it's okay to check the difference between current RPM versus your idle target and then make some feedback changes. We could add 15% or remove 15% in order to get the RPM uh, at the target. These feedback setup settings, uh, down here there's a feedback deadband of plus 50 RPM and minus 25 RPM. What this means is that when the measured engine speed is that close to your target, it's considered close enough and feedback will actually be paused. So if it took minus 5% to hit your target, and you're within 50 RPM above or 25 RPM below the target, the feedback's going to pause, it's not going to make any changes. There's a certain amount of engine fluctuation that's just considered normal, and changing the airflow to the solenoid isn't going to make a helpful change. If you've got an engine with a really rowdy cam, you may need to crank these numbers up. It's usually safer to, to allow some more for the positive side of this dead band than for the negative side of this dead band. We might say that we're okay being between 1000 and 1100 RPM, but we're less okay with being between 1000 and maybe 975 RPM. We don't want to let it drop too far below our target without doing some feedback to correct. We're going to demonstrate the effects of P, I, and D gain uh, later. In general, I'd recommend to leave proportional at zero and derivative at zero uh, and do most of the adjustment with the integral. Some people use a little bit of proportional. I'm personally not a fan of this for idle feedback because as soon as the error goes down, then your proportional feedback also goes down, uh, and then the engine will usually go back to whatever the, the problem situation was. So in that sense, integral feedback is usually the way to go for idle because it takes a step one direction or a step the other direction, depending on if the RPM is too high or too low. And then once the RPM is correct, that feedback remains active, which is helpful to have. Uh, the rest of these settings we're going to talk about later. So let's start a log, let's turn this engine on, let's watch what the uh, idle feedback does as the engine's running. So what have we got here? Our coolant temp is 160 something, our idle target is 1000 RPM, and our idle feedback is now doing some work. It looks like it's adding 3% in order to get the engine RPM uh, to about a thousand. And you can notice that as long as the engine RPM is within those dead band limits we had, then the feedback isn't going to make any change. An easy way to get a feel for how quickly your feedback is moving is to make a quick change to either your base position table or your target table. Uh, I'm going to leave the target table for now because we want to focus on getting the car to idle nicely at a thousand RPM, but I am going to add uh, a relatively big number uh, to this uh, base position. I'm going to press the letter Z, which basically means this value. I'm going to type plus and then 
10. And when I hit enter, what that's going to do is it's going to change these table values. Um, it's going to increase them by 10. And we can watch what feedback does. So now the position went up, the RPM went up, the ECU is always checking the difference between actual RPM and target RPM, and then it's modifying the idle feedback value. Um, and we can see by now the idle feedback is about minus 9, and it's got our RPM back uh, where we want it to be. Uh, and it worked relatively quickly without too much, without too much RPM fluctuation there. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that change. And we can see that the RPM dropped quickly. Feedback is moving pretty slowly in terms of um, if this engine was idling too low. It stayed idling too low for a few seconds, so we may want to make the feedback happen a little more quickly. We also probably, this is a good demonstration for why it's helpful to have your base position table uh, a little bit high, because if we were if we were to have this position table too low, where it needs feedback to uh, prevent from stalling, for instance, I'm going to do Z and minus 5, because I don't want this engine to actually stall right now. So Z minus 5 drops our RPM, and feedback has to add um, idle opening on top of the base duty table in order to get the RPM close to what we, we want it at. Now, the trick of this is that each time that we turn feedback off, for instance by driving the car, or just giving it enough throttle that uh, that the RPM or the throttle uh, disable idle feedback, it's going to have to add, add airflow to prevent the engine from stalling each time, which means the RPMs are going to go too low for a while. So let's do a demonstration of that. You can see that the ECU has to add feedback, and if it's adding feedback slowly, then the engine spends a while uh, idling below our target, and if our target was set low enough, or we had a rowdy enough engine, at some point this is the sort of thing that's going to make the engine try and stall and just generally not behave nicely. Compare that to if we put these numbers back to where we had them, where feedback is adding very little, or ideally we want feedback to be removing a little bit. So I'm going to give it a little throttle, and you can here and hopefully see in this log that it's a lot better behaved. If we were to go up by 5 here, now feedback has to do a little bit of work in order to get the RPM down to the target. Uh, so now watch how this acts when we blip the throttle and, and let it go. In this instance it spends a little bit more time at a too high of an RPM and then eventually the feedback gets it down to you know, settled to the RPM of the target. So it's a lot safer in terms of preventing a car from stalling to have these base position numbers uh, a little too high, so feedback is always removing some percentage versus adding some percentage that, that gets you a little too close to an engine that wants to stall. Now let's, let's demonstrate different values for these PID feedback numbers. We saw that that, that I gain value ended up somewhat slow. So let's go, this is 0 0.05, if we doubled that 0 0.10, that should make our changes about twice as fast. Um, if we tripled it 0 0.15, that should make our changes about three times as fast. Uh, what the integral gain does is basically each time that the ECU is checking uh, and running through its feedback loop, the integral gain is just a small step. So if you make those steps very large, it'll take a big step each time that it sees that the RPM is above or below the target. Now we've set them to take steps that are three times as large. So now let's watch, let's watch again as we uh, make a quick step change to our target. This will be the same Z plus 10. And we can see here that the feedback made steps. You can see that the steps aren't happening uh, more than about three times per second. But you can also see that these steps were larger steps. Uh, if we control Z this, it's taking larger steps. Uh, and so it, it, uh, it gets the idle RPM back where you need to a little quicker. Let's adjust this feedback to go even larger steps. So 0.15 is three times what we originally had. Let's set this to 0.25 and watch how that does.
we set too large of a step for the idle eye gain, then it may overshoot. It's got a better chance of overshooting. And that that's still pretty good. So we could continue to make adjustments until we find a an idle eye gain that's too high. Let's go to point fifty. steps is large enough that it was overshooting. I'm going to take another log so we can see that a little more quickly. We found a value that is too large for our idle eye gain here. You can see that these feedback steps are very large and it has to correct and then correct a second time. It's, it's, it's going past the target. So that's, that's an indicator that our idle eye gain was too large. So I'm going to go back, now that we've sort of gotten a range of values that were too large and values that seemed a little too small, we can say that 55 is too large, uh, 0 0.05 was probably too slow, 0 0.015 is probably not too bad, and 0 0.020 is probably not too bad for this particular setup. Now different intake designs and different idle solenoids and all that sort of thing it's not it's not exactly possible to use the same number for every car um, but as an example this eye gain value seems to be working okay let's make a step change to our base table again and watch how it responds that time I think two things happened at once. We made a step change and the coolant fan had just turned on. So let's undo that step change. So that again, that caught the uh, RPM pretty well without a uh, without any overshoot. So that value seems to work pretty well. Let's take another look at what it was. 0 0.020. Another thing you may want to do here is uh, this is going to test a few different um, aspects of how the ECU is tuned. But if uh, if the car has a nice easy clutch to use, uh, just sort of drag the clutch a little bit and watch the manifold pressure move. So you can see manifold pressure is changing, RPM is dropping, and idle feedback is trying to compensate for that. That especially helps if the car is on a uh, on a flat surface and you can just sort of roll it without giving any throttle. Just roll it by dragging the clutch. This car is on an incline so I'm not able to roll it too much right now but that sort of thing um, as you change the load on the engine that's one of the things that feedback is designed to, uh, to, to work with. So we had set our feedback to be about minus nine. That's a little bit more than I prefer so I'm going to go Z minus five here. I want to see my feedback somewhere around minus five, minus six, and the reason for that is we haven't, we certainly aren't tuning for all situations here. This is uh, a car sitting idling at one temperature, you know, on one day, so it's nice to have a little bit of margin for error there. Now, other things that uh, start to come into play when feedback is active are idle TPS offset. Um, if you very gently press on the throttle. If you very gently press on the throttle and feedback is still active, you can have the idle target RPM increase so that the idle feedback doesn't fight you. Um, uh, you can see right now, if we very gently press on the throttle, when feedback disables, I'm at just a few percent throttle, 3% throttle, and I'm at 1500 RPM uh, without any feedback here uh, active. If feedback was active at 5% throttle and less, then the air control solenoid would be trying to fight us. So this is this is an example of why not to set idle on below a very high throttle percentage number. So right here, I'm going to give it 3% throttle, and what you're going to see is the RPM did not increase as much as it would have because idle feedback almost instantly went to a negative value. It's trying to uh, 
fight what you're doing with the throttle. That's the reason that you may want to, that you do want to disable um, feedback when the driver's pressing on the gas pedal. You don't want the idle air control solenoid trying to fight what the driver's trying to do. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them here on our YouTube account or email questions to infinitysupport at aempower.com.